All right. Hey, everyone. Today's question um, is going to be pretty awesome. I personally think it's a good question. So it says, which of the following proteins would have a signal peptide? And we have five choices, hexokinase, protein kinase, phosphofructokinase, sodium potassium ATPs, and citrate synthase. If you're studying for the MCAT, these are all proteins you should know. And you, they should know them because they're all involved in imperative pathways throughout the cell, whether that be the citric acid cycle, glycolysis, or just a very common protein present in the cell. But before we get started in answering this question, the first thing we need to know is what is a signal peptide? So in this, in this, um, in this drawing, the signal peptide is actually red. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight signal peptide red so we know that that's the signal peptide. So this is a signal peptide right here. Uh, and what does the signal peptide do? So as you can tell, we have two domains here. This upper domain is the cytosol, and it's already labeled there. And this lower domain is the ER. And as you'll see, the signal peptide is actually responsible for taking the remainder of this protein right here in green, the remainder of this protein into the ER. So if I were to summarize the signal peptide, it's basically a residue or a, a sequence of residues at the N-terminus, at N-terminus of the protein that basically leads the protein to the ER, okay? And basically once this N-terminus, uh, once this residue at the N-terminus uh, leads the yeah, protein to the ER, it gets cut off. And so the protein goes to the ER. And what do we know about the ER? Well, any protein that goes to the ER basically has to eventually end up outside of the cell, right? Or the protein ends up in the membrane. Right? So this is the main point behind this question. When I asked this question, I wanted wanted the wanted you all to figure out the signal peptide is in, responsible for directing a protein to the ER, right, from the cytosol to the ER. And in the process, when you understand that the protein is being directed to the ER, you need to know that the protein needs to either end up outside of the cell or it needs to end up in the membrane of the cell. Okay, so basically, when we end up going back to the question here, go back to the question itself. We're basically asking which of these proteins is basically outside of the cell or in a membrane. Because whichever one is outside of the cell or in a membrane needs to be going to the ER, which eventually means, because whichever one is outside of the cell or in a membrane has to be going to the ER, and that means that it needs to have a signal peptide. Okay, so to boil it down, we're going to go through each five, all of these proteins, these five proteins, and see which ones um, are outside the cell or in a membrane, because whichever one it is, is the one that's going to have a signal peptide. Let's go to the first one, hexokinase. Some of you may know hexokinase. Hexokinase is actually responsible for the first step of glycolysis, converting glucose right here, a six carbon sugar, to glucose six phosphate. Um, and in the process, you use up one ATP molecule. The delta G of this step is way, way below zero, which means it's a pretty spontaneous reaction. But more importantly, because it's a reaction in glycolysis, what is the location of this enzyme? Well, the location is in the cytoplasm. Glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. So the fact that glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm will actually lead us to conclude that there's no signal peptide needed. Okay no signal peptide because glycolysis is in the cytoplasm which means hexokinase is in the cytoplasm which means it doesn't need to go to the ER and so it does not need a signal peptide. Now let's move on to the second part, second enzyme that was mentioned which was protein kinase. So some of you may know protein kinase, others of you may not, but I have an example of it right here. This is protein kinase drawn in star that's protein kinase. Protein kinase is involved in many intracellular pathways, okay, and there's a lot of pathways that use protein kinase, but the point is it's within the cell, right? It's intracellular pathways. Um, usually it could be something like glycogen breakdown, sugar metabolism, lip lipid metabolism, all of those are intracellular, and because they're intracellular, Protein kinase, as shown in this picture, is usually found in the cytoplasm. And if it's in the cytoplasm, it does not have a signal peptide needed to it because the signal peptide would have uh, directed it to the ER, which would have directed it to the outside of the cell. But as we can see here, it's in not outside of the cell, it's inside the cell, and therefore it does not need a signal peptide. Now let's move on to the next one. We have phosphofructokinase here. 
Phosphor fructokinase, if you don't know, you should know, because it's a major, major part, again, of glycolysis. Okay, and, and phosphor fructokinase actually converts from fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And in the, process, in the process, it uses up one ATP molecule and produces ADP. Um, more importantly, phosphor fructokinase is responsible for the first irreversible step of glycolysis. So glycolysis is pretty much reversible until you hit phosphor fructokinase. And this is the first, first irreversible step of glycolysis. Okay, and once you pass this step, you are officially committed to glycolysis. The other reason why phosphorhydrokinase is such an imperative enzyme is because, let me make sure I draw this in a different color. Okay, this whole part right here that's, that I'm not really going to emphasize is the fact that phosphorhydrokinase is heavily regulated. Okay, so phosphorhydrokinase regulates glycolysis because if you have high amounts of ATP, phosphorhydrokinase gets inhibited, right? Right here, you can see that. If you have high amounts of AMP, it gets stimulated, and therefore, it controls glycolysis. If phosphorhydrokinase is working really fast, that means uh, glycolysis is going really quickly. If it's going really slow, glycolysis is going really quickly. And glycolysis, as you know, is the fundamental unit of respiration. It's the first step of respiration. So in a way, phosphorhydrokinase is regulating respiration. And respiration is what we're all doing all the time. Okay, but let's go back to the original question. Because phosphorhydrokinase is involved in glycolysis, and we know glycolysis is in the cytoplasm, phosphorhydrokinase is also going to be in the cytoplasm, and therefore it will not need a signal peptide. So this is not our answer, right? Now let's move on to the next enzyme, which was the sodium-potassium ATPase. The sodium-potassium ATPase takes in, uh, I believe it takes in two potassiums, it lets out three sodiums, and in the process, it uses one ATP. But look at this picture right here. This is the sodium-potassium ATPase, and what do you notice? Right away, you notice that it is in the cell membrane, right? It's present in the cell's membrane. And what did we say about the ER? The ER makes cells makes proteins that end up in the cell membrane. So the fact that the sodium-potassium pump is in the cell membrane means that it had to go through the ER, okay? And if it went through the ER, that means it needs a signal peptide, okay? It needs a signal peptide. And if it needs a signal peptide, that means this is the correct answer to our question. And so we're going to go back, and we know the right answer is going to be the sodium-potassium ATPase, but for the sake of completeness, let's just go ahead and go through citrate synthase. So out of all the enzymes mentioned, this was one that probably not a lot of you knew. Um, but even if you did not know it, you should have picked on this, you should have picked it up. You should have picked up the fact that it says citrate. And even if you didn't know where, what kind of ends, what uh, reaction it specifically catalyzes, you should have made the connection that citrate has to be linked to the citric acid cycle, right? The TCA. And the citric acid cycle is also another name for the Krebs cycle, right? And so the Krebs cycle is something that happens in the matrix of the mitochondrion, right? So the matrix of the mitochondrion, again, is not the outside of the cell, and it's also not the... Um, it's not the outside of the cell, and it's also not a membrane, and therefore this also would not need a signal peptide. And if you did really want to be on top of your gain and learn, learn what citrate synthesis does, it actually takes oxaloacetate, and it adds in acetyl-CoA to make citrate. And that's why this whole thing, the Krebs cycle, is also known as the citric acid cycle, because this is citric acid. And it's the first thing that's made in the citric acid cycle. And that's why it's called the citric acid cycle. Um, but that's just me nerding out. Um, but again, because it's in the mito matrix, mito uh, matrix of the mitochondrion, it's synthesized by a cytoplasmic ribosome, and does not need a signal peptide. So go back to original question now. Which of the following proteins would have a signal peptide? And that right here is going to be the sodium potassium ATPase. I hope this. Um, I hope I gave a good answer for this, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Uh, the answer again is D. All right.
See you guys in the next one. Give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video.